Hey, Brian Lynch here. Back around last Christmas, a friend of mine and I were talking about the orchard, and uh, he suggested that I should try growing a fruit called a pawpaw because they were selling pretty well at a farmer's market near him. Now, originally being from a fairly urban area, I didn't know what he was talking about, but uh, I'm always up for trying a crazy idea or two, and, uh, you know, started looking into it. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with pawpaw, it happens to be the largest fruit native to North America, and supposedly it tastes sort of like a cross between a mango and a banana. Even though the pawpaw was a favorite of Thomas Jefferson, it's never uh, achieved commercial success. Uh, and one of the key reasons is it's got a really short shelf life, and uh, that means you're probably never going to see it at your local Walmart, but uh, that makes it kind of perfect for a farmer's market. And uh, that kind of had me intrigued. Uh, even though it does have some interesting characteristics, there are some major drawbacks for the uh, a farmer's market. First, uh, the trees don't produce very much fruit. Uh, a full-size pawpaw tree is only going to produce maybe 30 pounds of fruit uh, at maturity. Uh, that's about one-tenth of a standard apple tree uh, grown on standard rootstock. Uh, second, probably the worst thing, is that the root system is really, really fragile. Uh, unlike apple trees, which just can be grown out in a field and then mechanically ripped from the ground and shipped across the country without any dirt in it on their uh, roots, uh, these pawpaw trees have to be uh, grown in uh, pots and then shipped across the country in their pots. So uh, that makes them kind of pricey to ship. On top of that, there aren't many uh, resellers of these uh, pawpaw trees. I called up one of them asking if they were uh, offered any volume discounts. Uh, they kind of laughed at me. And uh, so those two things together, uh, not much fruit per uh, tree, so yeah, I've got to plant them pretty close, maybe an 8x8 eight eight spacing, and uh, $25, $30 a tree. Uh, I ran the numbers, and uh, to plant an acre of these pawpaw trees, it would cost me $17,000 in trees. Now, I'm all for crazy ideas, but that's a little bit uh, more than I was willing to spend for this particular crazy idea. Luckily, very few pawpaws are patent protected, and almost all of them are grown on seedling rootstocks anyways. So, even though I had never seen a pawpaw in my life, uh, my plan became to create a small nursery block uh, of all the different varieties I could find, uh, germinate a whole bunch of uh, seeds, and then eventually graft over uh, all those seedlings into named varieties in my own little pawpaw nursery. Uh, this is how it's gone so far. In early February, I ordered a pound of pawpaw seeds, that's about 350 seeds, from F.W. Schumacher & Company out of Massachusetts. The seeds they sell haven't been treated, and pawpaw seeds need to go through a stratification process before they'll germinate. That basically means they need to be exposed to cold, wet conditions before they're going to germinate. So, in order to uh, replicate these conditions, I soaked the seeds for a bit, and then kept them in cold, wet dirt in my refrigerator for a while. Uh, the good people at Kentucky State University did an experiment comparing stratification times uh, versus germination rates that resulted in this graph. As you can see, the germination rates plateau at about 9 weeks or 63 days. Now, normally, I probably would have kept the seeds in cold, wet storage for a full 90 days, even though maybe only need 63. However, I started this project kind of late, uh, and that would have meant uh, keeping the seeds in cold, wet storage till about June. So, I figured the seeds would benefit more from an extra month of growing in their first year than an extra month of being chilled. 